Welcome back to Roy Roos Farm. Um, I haven't been recording a whole lot while I'm on the farm because normally I'm doing a lot. I'm doing a lot this morning, but um, normally I'm doing a whole lot and I really don't have time to like lug the camera around. Um, but I felt it was important that I uh, just kind of share some thoughts um, because I started this channel for a reason. Um, years ago, I started this channel because I wanted to encourage people. Um, I had a lot, I do hair for those of you that don't know me, I'm Whitney. Um, I've been doing hair for 20 years. I'm a master loctician. And um, so I have a lot of clients that, you know, know me um, on a personal level. And uh, a lot of them will say things like, you're superhuman and uh, how do you do it? Uh, being a single mother with six kids, um, an entrepreneur and farmer and all those things. And so I started this channel so that I could encourage people who don't think that they can do it um, to see that it's not about making everything look pretty um, and perfect, but it's doing what you can for your family. Uh, and there was a goal in mind when I started this channel, of course, and um, I'm sorry, when I started farming, um, of course, which was that I wanted to provide security for me and my family, uh, me and my kids, me and my, my mom, my sisters. And um, with that in mind, um, I wouldn't call myself a prepper, but I would like to say that I'm prepared for certain situations that the average person may not be prepared for. And so um, with that, I do believe that um, I wanted to kind of share how being prepared doesn't necessarily mean everything is going to be perfect. Being prepared um, doesn't always have to be that you grow 100% of your food or raise 100% of your meats um, and that you don't rely on anything. You don't have to be 100% off grid in order to just kind of be prepared. I left my basket inside, that's okay. I'm gonna do the old fashioned way. We're gonna grab the bottom of our dress and put our harvest there. Um, but I am kind of humbled in a sense um, due to the past couple of weeks um, dealing with the hurricane that went through Florida and Georgia, Tennessee, um, and South Carolina and North Carolina um, because there are a lot of people that I follow in those areas um, that, in, that were my inspiration when I first started out, um, that you would think is, or was very prepared for anything to happen. Life without, um, power, uh, no food in the grocery stores, um, just the things that we as homesteaders would like to think that we could survive through if it happens. Um, but everyone that I have watched that I follow for years that are doing way more than what I'm doing, they've all said the same thing. They could not have prepared for what actually happened. And I was hesitant to record this video because I do not feel like I am qualified to even mention the hurricane, um, Helene and the impact that it has made on the lives of those in those areas. I, I just don't feel like I'm qualified to make any type of statements, but I will say that it has opened my eyes um, to the level of preparedness that I would like to be. Now, again, um, Realistically, I can't afford certain things that um, would make me more comfortable in case of a, a situation where we are stuck at home and don't have power. Um, 
I mean, I'm at a place in life where um, even going and just purchasing a generator for a couple thousand dollars is out of budget for me. But in perspective of if we were to have some type of a snowstorm um, and the power was out and we don't have heat, um, I may not have a generator, but I might need to get some type of a heat source that um, I could, that we could, me and the girls could stay warm. Um, I have all electric cooking, but I watch some of the people that I, that I follow um, pull out their propane burners um, and make meals. And I thought I have propane burners for when I process my chickens. Um, so my heart goes out to these people who are devastated by this hurricane. Um, people who have lost everything, people who have lost their lives or loved ones, um, there's no amount of preparing that you can do for those things. Um, it's just not, it's unimaginable and there's no way to even, to no matter how much money you have to start to prepare for that type of devastation. Um, but... I want to still learn from this um, because it opened my eyes. It definitely opened my eyes. It has humbled me and it has shown me that how vulnerable we are. Um, I even watched some of the coverage um, not by like, you know, the big media companies, not by like the news stations or anything, but from people who are in it um, when they finally got cell service or internet and was able to document what they're going through and it hurt it hurt my soul and there's so many things that I wish I could do um, to help them but physically I can't financially I can't um, but I wish I could because I'm looking at these videos of people who are saying, you know, nobody's helping us. We are helping ourselves. Um, there was one lady who described um, that there were some things that were even donated and shipped down there and FEMA confiscated it and it did not get to the people it was supposed to get to. And honestly, they don't even know if it got to anyone because most of the government assistance that's there is not even going to the areas where their people are in need because they, it's too hard to get to them for whatever reason. I find it hard to believe that it's too hard to get to them when they've gotten to other countries um, in the worst of conditions. Uh, I'm not going to get on a soapbox now, but um, it's just stuff like that that lets me see how vulnerable we are as average people. Um, if tragedy and disaster strikes um, and we're on our own, uh, there's the reliance that people have. I, I haven't, I've always said I wanted to be as, have as little uh, dependency on the government as possible. Um, there are some things that, you know, we, like I don't have a choice I have to depend on. Um, but if I could get to a point where I don't have to depend on them as the government at all, uh, ideally, um, I would love to get there. Um, I'm not really big in politics as far as like discussing politics. I don't, I don't really care for politics at all. Um, Cause again, I don't, I feel like I would be, me and my family, we would be collateral damage in, in any situation. We are not at all a priority. At the end of the day, if the community is pulling together and trying to assist, when you have thousands of people missing or dead or both um and and you're not 
only not helping, but you're hindering the local people from helping each other. It is a sad, sad situation. And so I've been meditating on this thing, um, just kind of thinking if something was to happen, we're getting ready to go into winter. Now, last year we didn't have a winter at all. It was like, I don't even think it snowed once um, here in Virginia. But this year, because of just the <laughs> climate change, um, it, uh, it could be the other extreme. And if we had a snowstorm, which we've had here in the past, if we had a snowstorm and we're stuck, what would me and the girls do? We were without power for two and a half days last month. And um, that was an eye opener because I'm on a well and there's seven of us in the home. And if our power is out, which we experienced, the well pump does not work. And so my smaller kids did not understand the concept of you cannot use the bathroom right now. Um, or let's all use the bathroom at the same time and then let me go get a bucket of water from the pool so I can flush it. If you go to the bathroom and you just let it sit in there, the toilet's not gonna flush and now we're, we're gonna have, ooh, some smells. I must have been in his way. Uh, we're gonna have some smells. And so like just understanding that um, the power going out is more than just not having the TV or uh, internet. I am being attacked. Let me get these green beans and I'll come back. Um, so yeah, so understanding that um, the power going out is more than just, um, you know, not having some, some comforts. It can also be like a lot harder to function, like just with using the bathroom, washing your hands, taking a shower. Like we couldn't take a shower for two days. And as females, that is not ideal. Um, and so having some type of a system, like I've been saying that I wanted to have a rain catchment system that, um, would allow me to use rainwater for certain things. Um, I've also been saying I wanted to get a generator, but I have been prioritizing other things. I'll tell you what I did. And I'm mad at myself because I took a lot of them. Um, I was trying to survive the bee attacks. And in doing so, I harvested some llama beans that are not ready. Yeah, they're not even like close to being ready. This is why I stopped recording videos as I did things because I do things that don't make sense. <laughs> but as I was stating, um, you know, I find myself just kind of understanding that we need to be a little bit more prepared and, you know, maybe I shouldn't put off the um, generator realistically. Like I shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe I should put that back at the top of my priority list um, because anything can happen. I took a lot of llama beans. So yeah, so the eye opener for me would be changing the priorities because if I'm talking about being prepared, it's again, not just about growing and raising food. It's also about um, making sure that 
uh, if we lose access to power, will we be able to even cook? We wouldn't be able to last weeks um, and still be comfortable, you know? Um, and so that, that was, that was very, that was something I got from this, that I need to reprioritize certain things that we have going on. I kept putting off getting some type of a generator, even if I get a small one now, get my water catchment, my rainwater, uh, harvesting system up and going. I've been putting that off as well. Um, because we, with the pump, um, and a generator, <laughs> we can take a shower. I, it's just a, a sobering feeling to know that no matter how much of this I have accomplished, um, there's still so much more that I need to do in order to prepare for being on our own if stuff hit the fan. And there are some people who are not even in this lifestyle um, at all that are experiencing um, difficulties. And I wish I could do something to help. And I just pray that um, a lot of people have watched this situation and um, gain some type of knowledge, wisdom, discernment from it.